This will be my turn. Well, on behalf of all the great men and women of Bowling Green Assembly, I want to say uh, welcome and hi to all of you. We're all pretty busy over the plant. We have a quite a few of us actually here today um, as we uh, take a little bit of break from what we're doing uh, over at Bowling Green Assembly. The, uh, the, the comments that, that Harlan made about the, uh, the 2013 model year are terrific in that because of the, a number of things that we did for 2013. One, it was the last year of C6. Uh, two was the 60th anniversary edition. And three, of course, was the, just the iconic 427 convertible. Those three things taken together gave us a huge number of orders and a huge amount of opportunity for us as an assembly plant because, as you might guess, in, in my manufacturing world, volume is our friend. Uh, in many cases, if you announce the last model year of a car, your sales could tank and it would be problematic to keep your factory running. But because of those three things that I just mentioned, we ran at very high volumes. In fact, you can, oh, you can see earlier, we built 13,466 cars in the 2013 model year. And I, I, I want to remind you that that model year was about nine months long. We actually took three months out of that model year and built as many cars as we built in the two previous years as well, which were obviously 12 month model years. Now, the, um, uh, what that necessitated then is we basically ran the entire 2013 model year on, uh, on five 10 hour shifts uh, a week. Uh, as you all know, Bowling Green Assembly only runs one shift, normally an eight hour shift, but uh, we were on 10 hours, five days a week with six Saturdays thrown in during the course of the year. So thanks to all of you who bought 13s, it allowed us as an assembly enterprise to do the kind of work inside our factory to prepare ourselves for this, uh, this new Stingray, the, the opportunity we've got to build that car. One other comment that I would make that is pretty encouraging to all of us, uh, we stayed very clear on the message that while we had an increasingly larger number of our employees every day uh, getting focused on, this, on the Stingray as we entered the last phase of the C6 build, it was very important to all of us, and I, and I really mean all of us at the plant, that we continue to keep our eye on the ball with respect to the C6, uh, that we owed all of you who were gonna buy the 2013 C6s, we owed all of you the very best car that we could build. And we've been looking at some warranty data recently, and, and I know Taj and Harlan agree with me. The warranty levels on the, on the C6s, as we built out the last six months were the C6s, the warranty levels were the best they'd ever been in the history of the car. Uh, and so we are, yeah, thanks. With that, yeah, that's a big deal to us. Now, I don't want you guys to worry if you bought 2009s or 10s or something, that's just bad. But, but it was, you know, oftentimes you can see in a product as a product finishes its life cycle that things begin to taper off or die out. And uh, we finished as strong as we ever could have. And we're absolutely delighted by that because at the end of the day, what really matters is what you, the customer, is, are getting. And, uh, and you're telling us that you love what you get. But the last car came off the line on February 28th, about eight o'clock in the morning. It was, um, it was obviously a 427 convertible with a, an LS7 engine built by Taj. Uh, Taj and I had a chance to go to the uh, Wix and Performance Build Center in Wix and Michigan. And each of us built an LS7 that day. Um, it was back in February that we built those engines. Um, we, if, if you want to know, we exactly timed out. We, tied, we built them exactly at the same rate. <laughs> so there was, there was no competition going on when we, we finished there. But, uh, but Taj's engine went in this car. Uh, this car is now in the GM Heritage Center up in Sterling Heights, Michigan. It's one of our iconic uh, cars in the history of our company, certainly in the history of, of Corvette. Uh, the engine that I built, uh, a little plug here, is it went into the very last Z06 we built that will be a museum car uh, raffle uh, soon. So watch the museum website for that. Um, it's a good engine, believe me. It's a good engine that Dad built too. But, uh, but the, uh, it's an opportunity for us, obviously, to continue to enhance raffle. Uh, as I said, this was the last car we built. It came offline uh, that day, February 28th. It was a Thursday morning. As that car passed through every station inside the factory, uh, once that car left the station, we began to tear that station down and begin to make the transition for C7. In fact, when this car came off the line, the old body shop, those of you who've been in the factory, and many, many, many of you have, uh, you remember the, the frame shop where we welded the frames together, we had demolished the entire body shop. I couldn't have built another C6. If this guy would have come to me and said, I can sell 100 more C6s, I said, I couldn't do that for $100 million because we had already started the process of converting the factory over to, uh, to C7. Um, the, uh, the, the car was celebrated with a, a great deal of fanfare around, um, but we really, you know, as I said, I think publicly, the car came offline at 8.04, and by 8.30, we were 110% focused on, on making the C7. 
Now there was a number of very special cars that came off the end of the line near the end of the uh, model year, but the next photograph uh, is actually a car that came off line early in February. Uh, this was a Z06 with an engine built by Rick Hendrick for Rick Hendrick. Now all of us know Rick, all of us know that Rick is a great friend of Corvette. In fact, as you all know, Rick has bought the first two, you know, the first coupe and the first uh, convertible for the C C7 for a cool $2.1 million, which all of which went, went to, or goes to charity. But, uh, but Rick is a great friend of Corvette. He annually buys a number of Corvettes, of course, and, and, but he is a great friend of us because he also owns a significant number of General Motors dealerships and sells well over $4 billion worth of our product every year. So if Rick wants something cool, we're gonna make something cool for Rick. Um, this, uh, this Z06 uh, was, as I said, had an engine built by Rick, but it also had the same VIN number as his very first Corvette. And of course, Rick is well into triple digits on Corvette ownership. But, uh, but we're gonna do something special for Rick. So what we cooked up, Harlan and John and, and others cooked up, we would make that the very last C6 that we ever shipped. And so we held the car and held the car while we continued to, to run the ship lot down. And today, of course, if you looked over at our ship lot, there's not a car in it. And about March the 11th, uh, we had shipped every car, except Rick's. So we set up this photograph. I parked the car in the center of our 1,400 car ship lot. I parked the car, pulled an empty transport up beside it. And uh, Bob Buttons from the museum here came over and shot some photographs from the, uh, from the roof of our plant um, for, uh, uh, as proof, as visual proof that this is the very last car we did. But what we did with that print then was, um, as you can see, a lot of gray around that car. Um, I, we made it into a big poster sized photograph. Every one of our employees in the factory signed it. We framed it and it's now on its way to Rick, Rick's uh, uh, museum in Charlotte. Um, Rick is such a great friend of, of ours, and we, we really wanted to give him the kind of tribute that says, you know, what do you do for a guy like that? Well, you do stuff that's from your heart, and that's what, uh, that's what this tribute was. So, so as we look back on C6, we have, uh, have great memories of C6, but as we look forward to C7, we are working our tail off. Um, it's a very exciting time at the Corvette Assembly. As I'm fond of saying, if it was new equipment, we installed it. If it's new employees, we welcomed them. If it was concrete, we polished it. And if it wasn't moving, we painted it. So, <laughs> By the time you guys get a chance to come back into the factory, you're gonna see an all new environment uh, that is truly worthy of not only uh, our employees working there, uh, the product that we build, but also what you all as customers and enthusiasts deserve to see as a part of uh, this iconic American sports car. So, great fun going on over at the plant. Uh, I'm gonna head back over there shortly and make sure we're still doing it. But uh, anyway, it's, it's a great, uh, great pleasure to be a part of anything going on with Corvette, uh, this included, thanks. Thank you, Dave. Dave's been an awesome partner. Uh, we've never had a better relationship between the Michigan contingent and the Kentucky contingent. Uh, all of us working shoulder to shoulder, uh, trying to make this car perfect uh, when it comes out and uh, make sure we can get it in your hands uh, as soon as we can and as perfect as we can. Dave was being a little kind uh, on his engine story. We, we did build the two engines uh, on the same day, down the same line. He was ahead of me and he pulled away quite quickly as you'd expect a manufacturing guy, we didn't build them the same amount of time. He built his a lot faster than I built mine. And it makes sense that his engine went in the car that we're gonna sell, that's the one we're gonna raffle. You really want the engine built by the manufacturing guy. <laughs> the manufacturing professional, that's, that's the engine you wanna drive, whereas mine's more of a showpiece, you know. We'll, we'll just keep it at the Heritage Center and- uh, Showpiece, quarantine, same thing. <laughs> But anyway, it's an awesome experience. Anybody ever gets a chance to uh, do the engine build program, absolutely fantastic. And Dave, Dave would probably like to talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, I should, can I talk about that for a second? As all of you know, at the end of January, we announced some very exciting news for Bowling Green Assembly. We are going to move the Engine Performance Build Center from Wixom, Michigan, right inside our factory in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Um, that is gonna offer not only the opportunity, yeah, thanks, it's really cool for us, it's very exciting. Not only does that continue to add jobs to South Central Kentucky, which is obviously very important for us, but it also offers a, a, the only place in the industry for a customer to come and build their engine. And of course, my vision is that a customer could come in, build their engine on Monday, and we'll put it in a car for them on Tuesday, and by the end of the week, we'd have that car off the line and almost ready to rock and roll. Um, the Engine Build Center is gonna go, as I say, right in the center of the factory. Uh, it will continue to build high-performance engines for Corvette. But uh, uh, we will continue to offer the engine build, uh, 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 the customer build experience 
uh, for customers that are interested in building their own engines. And I think I can speak for both of us, Dad. We kind of went in there because it was sort of the, the, you know, kind of the significant thing to do. But if you've done it, you'll know what I'm saying. You kind of get emotionally attached to that engine. I mean, it was really a cool experience. And when you put it into, into balance and you hit the starter and it starts, it's like, wow, this is really cool. I want this in my car. So anyway, we're going to continue to do that. Um, we're very excited about the opportunity to do that. It's going to, going to add a little space to the factory and, and uh, create the kind of world-class environment that an engine build uh, uh, system needs to be. Uh, it happens to be something that in my previous career I spent a lot of time doing, so we know a little bit about this uh, process, so we're looking forward to having it going. We'll begin the, the movement of the engine uh, build center from Wixom uh, down here as early as July uh, and expect to be operational sometime in the first quarter of 14. So we're looking forward to that. So thanks, let me talk. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> thanks, been a great partner. But for anybody who's wondering, it's pure coincidence that we are dressed identically today. <laughs> pure coincidence, I'm sure we did not coordinate this. Anyway, anybody want to talk about C7? I will. You will? All right, well, let's let Harlan talk. All right, well, next one.